is there still any uh, space to grow? Of course, yes, because Indonesia is, uh, you know, the fourth uh, largest population in the world. And, you know, even though, uh, even though there, there's still many, uh, any other similar startup who launch their app or any uh, platform or any services, I think that's, you know, that's, that's good because we need to, you know, to call to collaborate to to solve this problem together. You know, because it's just that uh, talking about environmental issues and talking about uh, the waste, the marine uh, pollutant. I think it's it's not, you know, it's not a small problem. It's it's a very huge problem. So, so, uh, yeah, so we we still need to collaborate, and I think like uh, every single app. Or, or every single platform has their own uniqueness. Hi everybody and welcome to the Breaking Silos Collective, the series where we tell you why breaking silos matters and how you can do it. My name is Sophia Jamel and I am the East West Centre's Experiential Professional Development Ambassador for Southeast Asia and the co-host for this special Breaking Silos series with the Innovation for Sustainable Development Fellows from the East West Centre. Uh, as mentioned in the introduction, this series is done in collaboration with the East West Center in Hawaii. Uh, and our episode is one out of 15 episodes where we will be speaking to uh, the East West Center's 2021 Innovation for Sustainable Development Fellows to know more about their innovative projects. And these fellows are young professionals um, and East West Center alumni under the age of 40. Uh, in various fields such as the arts, the environment, education, health, and disaster re resilient sectors. And they come from a variety of, uh, of countries worldwide. So today I'm very happy to have with me Musari Mukta, who is the co-founder and COO of Octopus Indonesia, to tell us more about his app uh, that is used to advance, advance sustainable waste management uh, Indonesia. So. Uh, before I before we start our conversation, I'd just like to tell you a bit more about uh, Musawi, or also known as Awi. Uh, combining his interest in technology and economic development, Musawi Mokta currently leads the day-to-day -day operations of Octopus Indonesia, which is a waste management application to effectively collect and recycle rubbish while creating a network to protect our cleaners. Prior to Octopus, Musawi served as the as the global innovation through science and technology, or techno, technology idea alumni mentor under the American Association for the Advancement of Science. Previously, Musawi has been recognized by, by the East West Center Alumni Leadership Impact uh, Award nominee, uh, Phillips Innovation Award, Young Social Entrepreneur Singapore uh, by the Singapore International Foundation and the Young Leaders for Indonesia by McKinsey and Company. He's always been interested in how communities and technology interact to solve the world's problems. And he is a frequent speaker on social impact and millennial entrepreneurship. Thanks, Awi, for joining me here today. Maybe we could start by you telling us briefly why you started Octopus and what are the sustainable development gaps uh, that, it, that the app addresses in your own words. Okay, uh, thank you, Sophia, for having me in the Breaking Silos uh, today. So um, uh, the very main reasons why I, uh, we started uh, Octopus uh, back then in 2018. So uh, we just, um, we just uh, running our uh, startup company into uh, years back in 2018. Um, uh, but we actually uh, running launch our app in in the early 2020. So we just uh, two years now. So uh, the very main reason why I started Octopus back then uh, it because um, I, I I I'm live I was living in uh, Makassar uh, in South Sulawesi. So we started our pilot project here 
uh, in Makassar because Makassar is uh, one of the biggest cities in in Indonesia. And as we as we are as we all are now that uh, Indonesia Indonesia is one of uh, the big the second biggest uh, marine pollutant uh, in the world, second only to China. And then uh, in Makassar itself, like uh, the uh, Makassar city produce over like one one thousand and two hundred uh, tons of plastic waste uh, every single day, and that's um, that's kind of huge. Uh, and also, it's it, it also happening in other big cities in Indonesia, such as Jakarta, uh, Bandung, Surabaya, uh, and uh, any big cities in Indonesia. So, um, so I'm uh, I with uh, my team trying to figure it out, like what was happening, because um, because most of the uh, developing country, not only in Indonesia, but also most of the uh, emerging countries in Southeast Asia, also face the same challenges, uh, face the same problem. So we do like uh, market research uh, within a year. And then uh, we found that like uh, there, there's uh, there's some under uh, underground problems that um, uh, that we are currently facing, uh, especially uh, in the waste uh, management uh, sector, because uh, because um, uh, based on the data that uh, we found uh, that uh, only less than 10 percent Indonesia knows how to um, uh, recycling their waste, how to recycle their waste. So, so uh, the most problematic factors uh, is um, most of the people nowadays don't know how to recycle, uh, how to recycling their waste or their rubbish. And also um, some of the people knows how to recycle, but they don't have access to, to do it. And also um, there's uh, some multi-layers uh, actors in, in, in the waste value chains, like for example, uh, the waste pickers uh, or the scavengers or uh, the small waste pickers, uh, they only they only um, have uh, they, they only can sell their uh, waste uh, for two hundred and uh, two thousand and five hundred. Uh, it equals to uh, I think um, uh, I think two cents uh, for every kilograms uh, waste that they uh, that they that they take so it, it's so cheap because they have to uh, they have to sell it to the uh, you know um, to the small traders and then uh, big bosses and then um, a very big boss so like they have to uh, go through multi layer uh, value chains until uh, until the waste go to the industries so and also uh, this is because the waste industries is uh, is kind of you know like a gray market area like um people don't uh, don't really uh, honest about the price so no price standard uh, so so the players or uh, as known as uh, middlemen they just you know like uh, they just uh, set the price standard based on their uh, needs so so that's why we call uh, the, uh, these things is gray market area so so we comes up the, uh, with the ideas uh, with uh, uh, building and develop and applications. So we are currently have uh, three applications. Uh, the first uh, app is for users or uh, the waste generators. So every single uh, person or, or everyone who has um, waste in their in their home or or maybe uh, offices or restaurants, cafes or or anything that we can categorize um, waste producers or waste generators. And then we also have, uh, if you if you know like um, maybe you know Grab or maybe Gojek in Indonesia, it's it's kind of similar app, but uh, we are more focusing on a uh, waste waste collecting rather than uh, food or maybe transport. So so we applied the same ideas from uh, Gojek and Grab uh, to the waste management system. So uh, we are currently have two apps. Uh, uh, first app is uh, for the, the users, and the second app is for uh, the pelestari. Uh, the pelestari means the waste collectors, and then also the third one is the checkpoint. So the checkpoint is the uh, like, like local waste bank. So we empower uh, existing waste bank to uh, enter our ecosystem. So so what we are trying to do is that we don't want to cut uh, any entity that are currently playing in this existing value chain. Uh, instead, we, we hire them and then we uh, we encourage them to, to join us in our ecosystem so they can get better price and then also uh, they can get uh, better 
uh, job descriptions. So, so that's all uh, started in, in 2020, uh, uh, and we launched our app and in Makassar City. And also, since our founding, uh, since our launch in 2020, we uh, we just running our app in three uh, different provinces in Indonesia, including South Sulawesi, uh, which is Makassar, Makassar City, and also Bali, Bali province. In Bali, we we. Uh, uh, we are currently um, uh, running our presence in uh, different cities such as Denpasar and any big cities in, in Bali and also uh, West Java. We are currently uh, running our um, uh, our app in Bandung City and also Bandung uh, Cimahi and also uh, Bandung Selatan and any other uh, big uh, cities in West Java. And also uh, later this year, we are currently um, uh, we, uh, in a final stage to prepare our expansions in uh, Jakarta as well, and also uh, 26 regency and cities in in the whole uh, West Java. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I think there are two points that really struck me when you were talking. One is that the there's so many the middleman, yes. you know, makes the money, yeah. and these poor yeah. guys only get two cents for one kilogram of waste that they yes. collect. It's like really, yeah. wow. So I mean, I mean, clearly here you're cutting out the middleman and bringing them direct yes. to, the, um, yes. to the people that are waste, uh, generating the True. waste. True. And I True. like the fact and that you you call the uh, the second app, you call the the the, the waste because uh, Palestari is like, you yes. know, they are playing, playing an active role in caring for the environment. So, so I think sure. that's really good. So they're not. Yeah, it's not. Sure. They're just picking waste. It's actually sure. they do something good for the environment. Um, yeah, because most of the time, like you know, like um, uh, all this time, uh, small waste pickers is also uh, you know always uh, people always you know think that uh, waste pickers is uh, something negative. You know, um, in a way that you know they they looks uh, dirty or maybe um, some of the cases. Um, like you know like the household like just um you know uh, go stall uh there may be a personal stuff because of the small way speakers now we 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 gave them such as clear job descriptions and also uh, they have some kind of uh, credential identity so they can enter you know like uh, the household any household offices uh, restaurants cafes or um any kind of uh, business to business um uh, um private sectors or offices so with with our presence uh we hope that small ways uh, people can respect this job and also people can recognize that this is also um a real job yeah, yeah. right excellent uh, on that note we have a few questions from your fellow um colleagues yeah. in the in the fellowship uh, Maro from bangladesh has a question uh, how easy, how easy or difficult is it to get these uh, waste pickers to sign up to the program, and what has been their situation before joining the program? I think you mentioned it a bit already that they were not yeah, earning yeah. much. Um, but yeah, how what have they? What have, what have the challenges been in getting them on board? Okay, uh, one of the big, the biggest challenges that we faced during our um, you know uh, when we hired them as as our Palestari because uh, first first of all like uh, we want uh, we want that like uh, the way, the small way speakers or the literally scavengers who are working uh, in, in a regular basis as a small way speakers to join our ecosystem but later uh, this years like not only this um, you know this uh, uh, these way speakers but any kind of people who comes from many professions you know such as um, uh, you know, such as the, uh, teachers and also um, a hotel uh, staff or uh, a keep, uh, shopkeeper or any kind of uh, professions uh, can join us as uh, small way speakers because of the maybe because of this pandemic situations many people lose their job so with our presence uh, they 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 have a sense of uh, hope like you know to to have uh, extra uh, income by joining uh, as a as a, uh, as a and also because um, um, and also uh, one of the 
the biggest challenges because most of them like in the beginning coming from you know like uh, C class society like uh, not very well educated persons so and then we and in octopus we are dealing with uh, applications and services so uh, so it's 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 quite challenging for us to educate them uh, on how to use uh, or or how to operate uh, those applications like uh, the standard operational procedures when we heading to the customer's house and then uh, uh, greetings and then check their stuff, check their rubbish, uh, their waste, how many bottles that they order, how many uh, plastics that they order and then they see uh, the apps, uh, is it suitable with uh, their orders or uh, is there any, you know, like some kind of scam or um, uh, any kind of scam orders uh, uh, because because many people like use this opportunity as well to to gain uh, profit uh, with uh, unresponsible you know uh, so uh, that's one of the biggest challenges and also one of our way to overcome this uh, problem is that we hire local youth that we call tentacle because we are octopus so we need tentacle tentacle is our volunteer mm -hmm. Uh, that consists of youth, students, or, or fresh grad, or uh, early professionals who are eager uh, to join us or to contribute to the environmental uh, issues. And then they, they help us to educate uh, the user, the Palestari, and then transfer the knowledge to Palestari on how to use uh, the applications. So I think that was um, uh, that w w one of the uh, biggest uh, challenges that we faced. But now it's 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 uh, more easier uh, with the help of of the East West Center as well with with this uh, fund we we are trying to uh, you know to automate this training so uh, so we we are currently making like you know like the the professional videos so every uh, plastari or every small West speakers can access the video on how to operate the applications so and then uh, after they complete the video. Uh, they have to like answer a set of questions uh, regarding that matters, and then if I if they pass, they can uh, receive the OTP password to log in into their applications. Yeah. So so that, that and also it 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 makes us uh, easier like to to do expansions because you know like uh, we are currently hit uh, over nine thousand uh, small voice speakers throughout Indonesia. So it's it's, it's a huge uh, community. Um, we started over like 3,000 in Makassar, and now we we already grow uh, to over 9,000 uh, small voice speakers joining in our ecosystem. So it's it's a little bit easier now. Yeah. Wow. I, yeah. I mean, I was going to ask about the training. How do the technical yeah. do the training given this yeah. situation? But I mean, the fact that um, you know the East West Center program is now helping to. Digital, yeah. Digitalized. Uh, yeah, digitalized. It's really good. Um, we had a question related to that. Um, Soko from Mongolia asked whether the app is usable without an internet connection. Um, okay. Well, yeah. unfortu well, unfortunately not. So yeah. like any other similar app, it's require internet connections, fortunately. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, but but you know, like um, like before we started our project uh, back in twenty twenty, we already done so much uh, research, especially in Makassar, and also, uh, you know, like uh, even even we started our project, like many people uh, thought us and many people ask us, how do you can uh, engage the small way speakers? Do they have a smartphone? But the fact uh, that that we that we found in you know, in, in our um, observations that over 90% small way speakers from, uh, you know, C-class society already have, uh, you know, smartphone because it's also, you know, like um, one of maybe in Indonesian styles, like uh, even you can afford it, you have to like <laughs> buy it, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, you, it's, it's, you have it's a all the bag. data. Yeah, yeah you have yeah. all that so data yeah. about, you know, there's so much internet penetration, yeah. high internet yeah. penetration in 
in Southeast Asia, especially in Asia. I know, Asia, so, I know so, it's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's interesting, Sophia, because because you know, like uh, here in Indonesia, we um, we have like over two hundred and seventy million populations, and over two hundred uh, populations is uh, already uh, on the internet. You know, like uh, internet active users. So it's safe to say that uh, nowadays internet connection, uh, internet connection is not like you know like uh, something that we that we cannot have. Like everyone have it. So I think that's not a problem. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's really interesting. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so your clientele is both businesses and household consumers, right? Mm -hmm. um, so El Elton from the Philippines has a question. How has yeah. Octopus communicated and collaborated with the top waste generators uh, in Indonesia? Uh, would you say that the most of the waste generated is from the households or the businesses? Oh, mm -hmm. oh yeah. Okay, that's a that's a very good question. Um, because uh, at the very beginning, since our founding, we are only um, uh, uh, octopus only rely on you know household uh, waste, you know like from uh, waste from the household. But but now we are also launch our business to business services, which is um, uh, hotels, offices, restaurants, cafes. Uh, because we uh, we think that uh, based on our findings as well, like uh, uh, the waste from you know the business, the waste from uh, the business to business is more higher, like even like ten times uh, higher uh, in terms of volume, uh, because because household only have like you know like a small uh, waste, a small volume of waste, uh, while um, the offices and restaurants, of course, they have more. So. Uh, so we change it a little bit uh, our business model so we can also uh, can uh, earning from uh, the waste trading not only from the household and uh, you know how, how we collaborate with the uh, waste generators um, is that um, because we are in, in applications we are currently have uh, over 80,000 uh, users um, in within uh, two years so it's it's like you know like it's uh, uh eighty thousand users is not a small amount. It's it's uh, it's huge for for applications in waste management. So it it, it indicates that uh, you know like people uh, nowadays already aware uh, of uh, their waste, how to dispose their uh, rubbish, their waste, and then and then with this um, uh, with this sim, we can uh, talk to a business owner to like. You know, like to helping them on board in our app. It's also, uh, you know, uh, they can also uh, promote their brands that uh, they already collaborate with. Uh, you know, one of the uh, circular economy platform in Indonesia, and also it's it's also uh, give you know some kind of uh, positive, uh, you know, uh, positive image from their for their companies or their brands that they uh, also uh, are really going uh, zero waste. We collaborate with us as a circular economy platform. And also uh, we're getting support from uh, the Ministry of, uh, of uh, uh, Industrial uh, in Republic of Indonesia and also uh, uh, the Ministry of uh, uh, Maritime uh, in Indonesia, Republic of Indonesia uh, to endorse our um, business. So it's it's kind of you know like we we're trying to make uh, our image that we are um, officially you know uh, recognized by the government, so that the company or, or uh, other businesses are you know interested to join us also to um, you know uh, uh, to bring such as uh, uh, such a positive image to their uh, businesses. So that's our mm -hmm. uh, that's one of our um, our tip. Right. I, I like that because yeah. this is like, in a way, it's breaking silos. You're not just an environment yeah. initiative, you know. It, yeah. You don't just engage the environment ministry. You also yeah. engage the other more economic related ministries that you say, hey, we yeah. have a benefit yeah. beyond the environment. It's, you know, it's, mm. it's, it's, 
socioeconomic issues, it's merit, marine issues and all that. So yeah. I, I, I really like that. Let's take another question um, from Ma'ruf from Bangladesh again. What are the incentives for household generators to use octopus services? Okay. What are the okay. What sort of incentives? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the incentive for uh, the household who who are using our services, so they they uh, they di directly got you know like points and also cash from uh, it depends from what type of waste that they dispose to our uh, app. So uh, the, uh, for example, um, uh, they call uh, Plastari because they have like ten pieces of uh, bottles, like mineral bottles. So they they will get like. Uh, over like 5,000 points from uh, those bottles and then from the points they can do redemption so it, it uh, redemption system they, they can redeem their point to the you know like like credit for uh, their their phone or um, like you know like electricity electricity voucher and also uh, they can transfer to their electronic wallet such as uh, OVO or such as GoPay and uh, any other um, local bank that they have and also because because here in octopus we are we are trying to implement it uh, what we call like deposit refund system so uh, so we are um, partners we do partnership uh, we do uh, corporate with uh, fast moving consumers good you know um, fmcg brands um, because uh because in indonesia also uh, there's uh, a new rules uh that what we, what we call extended producer responsibility where the fcg brands uh have uh, you know like uh, uh, have to uh, track and uh, collect their uh, post uh, consumer packaging back to the industrial recycling so so here in octopus we are trying to uh, you know, to use this uh, very uh, moment, you know, like, uh, to uh, to promote our brands and to promote our services. That hey, uh, you can you can fulfill your um, extended procedure responsibilities with uh, our services. You you can uh, you you can direct you can give incentive directly to the uh, our local waste pickers and also to the users who are uh, uh, who are uh, both. Uh, or buying your product, uh, and then you can give incentive directly through our uh, apps. So it's it's a uh, deposit refund system. So it's it's really depends depends on the what type of uh, post consumer packaging that they have that the user have uh, to dispose, and then they they can get point and cash directly from their apps. So it's it's like uh, like a game changing. Like you collect like you collect your waste, your rubbish, and then you dispose them. You recycling them through our app, and you get the point. And then the point you can uh, re you can do redemption with some cash or or some you know beneficials uh, such as you know like discount voucher to any uh, small uh, store or any uh, only any store that we are currently uh, partnership with. Yeah, right. I mean I, I like that because you know people think that when government makes policies and initiatives mm. and yeah. new laws, how does that? trickle down to society but here you are actually saying hey we can help you are filling filling the gap like we can yes. help you yes. uh, making it easy for you to implement this law to to actually have benefit to the fcmg um companies and so forth i, I mean i think that's really good like filling in the gap yeah uh, yeah it's fantastic namrata from india asks if you could share any success stories uh, about the app um okay. yeah if, if you can mention any achievements that you've seen through the app and what are the experiences the changes that you've experienced after initiating it okay okay um uh, re this, despite of the some of the points that I've, I've mentioned earlier such as we already hit like over 90 uh, over 80,000 users throughout in Indonesia and also we already uh, have over 9,000 uh, local waste collectors and of, and of course we we give them like um, you know like real job descriptions and one of our uh, you know our most successful stories that we have within uh, these two years one of our plastari or uh, waste pickers uh, before they joined us, uh, they 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 only got like 
75 US dollars per month by collecting uh, those waste, uh, those uh, rubbish and waste from the landfill or from um, uh, any trash bin. And then they just, you know, like uh, he is such a uh, hardworking person because they have to feed his two children and then also uh, his wife. Uh, they have to bring uh, food to the table. So after joining us uh, in, in October uh, 20, uh, 2020, uh, they got like seven seven hundred and fifty US dollars. So it's it's over ten, ten million. No. Yeah, ten times. It's over ten millions uh, Indonesian rupiah. And and here in Makassar, it's like uh, four three to four times like the minimum uh, regional wage. So it's it's one of our um, you know like everyone like uh, uh, proud of him because you know like after joining. Uh, as in octopus, they they got like uh, seven times higher uh, income before uh, they joining us. So we we'll, we we here we leverage uh, the local waste scavengers not only uh, in terms of their income, but also in terms of their capabilities and also hard skills and also soft skills and you know many things. And also also in Bali uh, here another case in Bali uh, uh, according to our study divisions and also our latest data that uh, there are more than 113 uh, Palestari or local waste collectors uh, from the ex uh, hotel staff so uh, before they, uh, they they're working in hotel uh, uh, as, uh, as a cleaning service or uh, restaurants uh, uh, keeper but now uh, after this pandemic hit us hard um, they go, you know, uh, cut. Uh, they get cut off from uh, their companies, and then joining uh, in Octopus as our uh, Palasari. So, so yeah, it's safe to say we 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 help them a little bit to mm. to to go through this uh, hard time. Yeah. And just a bit about the business model. So yeah. the pay that the Palasari get, these are. The money comes from the fee that is charged to the people that are using the service or how does that work okay no uh well well actually um the people or the users or the waste generators or, or the households or anything who are using our services it's, it's free so they didn't get charged from uh, using our services instead they got point that they, that they can uh do redemptions so that's that's our that's one of our competitive advantage from any other competitors in Indonesia because our services is completely free and you can get the cash and you can get the point from your waste and you can fit your lifestyles like you can you can get coffee from the local coffee shop with using our your points and then it's all free so uh, and and also uh, the plaster will get the cash because we ha we have like uh, several incentive sim for example, like from uh, the more uh, the more product or the the more waste that they pick up, or the most the more order that they uh, pick up, the more uh, incentive that they get, and also the more far uh, they go to pick it up their uh, you know uh, orders, such as you know like uh, from uh, if, if they go if they go to the uh, household which you know like uh, three kilometers away or even. Uh, the more the more far they go the more uh, incentive that they will get so uh, the incentive come from uh, deposit refund systems from the F fmcg brands because for example uh, the mineral bottles um, that the fmcg sell it to the market is uh, for example like the real price is twenty thousand rupiah and then but but the original uh, but the cost production only one thousand so the one thousand is actually for the environmental you know things so because they have they 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 do responsible to track and to collect the waste back to the industry uh, recycling industries so uh, we take over uh, those uh, refund system to give it to our uh, plastari as an incentive yeah so that's that's our uh, business model one of our other fellows in the in the East West Center program uh, from Myanmar, um, Oka, he runs Recyclo, which is kind of similar. It's also an app to kind of connect 
uh, yeah. different players in the risk management system. Uh, yeah, I read that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what are uh, in Indonesia? Who are your other competitors? Uh, and do you think there's still room to grow in this market? I, I would think so because there's a lot of waste, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm just wondering what you thought about that. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think in Indonesia there there are any other similar startup as well who are who are joining um, you know in this uh, kind of competitions. There are startup called uh, Mall Samba and also Waste for Change and also Kapul and also Do It In and I think uh, there's still many many. But but uh, if the question is that uh, is there still any uh, space to grow? Of course, yes because Indonesia is, uh, you know, the fourth uh, largest population in the world. And, you know, even though, uh, even though there, there are still many, uh, any other similar startup who launch their app or any uh, platform or any services, I think that's, you know, that's, that's good because we need to, you know, to, col- to collaborate to, to solve this problem together, you know, because it's just that uh, talking about environmental issues and talking about uh, the waste, the marine uh, pollutant. I think it's it's not you know it's not a small problem. It's it's a very huge problem. So so uh, yeah, so we we still need to collaborate. And I think like uh, every single app or, or every single platform has their own uniqueness. So like in Octopus. So one of our unique, uh, one of our competitive advantage because, uh, you know, we were uh, we're only uh, required like minimum ten pieces, because any other platform like they they only have uh, can request for pickup if they have like over ten kilograms or five kilograms waste any certain waste. But in Octopus, you have you only have to like ten pieces bottle or. 10 pieces mix uh, waste like bottles or like uh, shampoo, HDPE or multi-layer sachet or monolayer sachet and you can you can call Polestari directly. So it's, it's uh, so we, we make it easier uh, as possible. And also our services is free of charge, of course, because uh, our business model where our our main revenue not 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 only not coming from the waste trading itself but also from uh, the extended producer responsibility. Mm, fantastic. Okay. Yeah. One more question from from Elton, Elton from Philippines. So with COVID now, you know all the challenges that are causing that COVID causes lockdowns and you know uh, quarantines, less movement. How have you? How has Octopus adapted to you know to the situation and still carry on? I think you kind of mentioned it that you said yeah, there are more yeah. people c- coming on board. Uh, but any other issues yeah. that have that okay. have been caused by COVID? Okay, like like early like last month, um, we uh, we are trying to protect our you know our ecosystems as well, our plastery, our small waste pickers, our our waste bank, and we did uh, you know uh, like uh, vaccine like uh, vaccine pre vaccinations for over. 500 small waste pickers in Bandung region for free. So it's 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 one of our you know kind of uh, uh, gesture like to more aware and to more you know uh, resilience with uh, this uh, pandemic situations. So we're also uh, trying to changing our standard operational procedure a little bit. Like uh, if they if they uh, come. To pick it up, uh, their orders uh, in households or in offices or uh, anything, they have to, you know, like they keep distance, like uh, minimum two kilo, uh, two meters, and then uh, the users only have to put it their rubbish uh, in front of their house uh, without uh, meeting directly with the, our local uh, waste pickers. So kind of things. So we we, we are trying to re-regulate our uh, system in terms of uh, our operations uh, so that we can still uh, running our you know services uh, without without hurting our local waste uh, collectors because uh, you know like even though 
uh, in some areas there's a lockdown and then we already talk we already uh, talk to our uh, small waste collector that you can you can easily you know like turn off your applications because uh, it's currently um, uh, lockdown and many people are affected and then the conditions is not that good to you know to go uh, to go from home to another home to pick up the uh, customers waste and then they still turn on their app because because maybe uh, they rely on uh, their source of income is rely on our uh, businesses so they still have to do the businesses even though we we already taught them so so yeah, yeah he uh, advised them the yeah the safety but they still want to go out and yeah do it. yeah right. okay yeah i mean Times are tough, and you know, uh, yes. I guess as long as they keep the the social distance and wearing masks, yes. uh, keeping well, yeah. whatever prevention so, they can. Yeah. Mm, okay. Um, so I have a couple of final questions that I usually ask people on the show. What does breaking silos mean to you? And what advice would you give someone that wants to break silos for sustainable development? Okay. Um, for me, the breaks uh, silos for me is you know like um, it's it's um, it's it's a stage for anyone who you know who who has uh, something to share. Even though like uh, maybe uh, I believe like many youth uh, around the world, uh, maybe in Southeast Asia or working on their uh, very great project, but then they they haven't got the chance to share uh, you know their. Uh, what what they already doing with their uh, project and then with the break silos uh, uh, not only we can share our um, you know our project but only we can learn uh, some insight from uh, any others uh, uh, people who are joining uh, who are uh, uh, who are break uh, their silos so I think uh, like this is a, a very great chance for especially for um, 2021 uh, the East West Center Innovation uh, Development uh, Fellows to you know to reconnecting uh, the dots that uh, I'm thinking and really think that that actually you're not alone in this uh, in this tough situations like we are we are together even uh, me maybe in Indonesia and some, some other people in the Philippines in Myanmar and in any other uh, in Bangladesh any other uh, country in the world and that that it, it reminds me that anything that that we are going through right now it's it's uh, you know like every storm will uh, pass away and because uh, we are together we can share uh, our uh, not only our project but maybe can uh, can be more personal like you know like maybe like how you can yeah the experiences mm. how how you can aspire um some other people to um join you as well so i think many things that we that we can uh, address is in this um a break silos excellent fantastic yeah. uh i mean i really enjoyed what you've shared um do you have any final thoughts or sh shout outs that you want to say to the people watching I think uh, my final thoughts that um, just just continue what you are doing, and then even though uh, there's no people watching you, just just do what you believe, uh, and uh, you know like bring some uh, positive impact to your surroundings because because it it, it will uh, gives you some sort of you know happiness that uh, we as a human being um, always you know like looking for uh, that things that makes us, uh, you know, feel, uh, feel happy. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, okay. Well, thank you, Awi, for thank sharing yourself, with us yeah. the work of uh, Octopus and, you know, how it's, you know, growing and really getting more people on board. And thank you to our viewers. Uh, I hope you found this discussion insightful. And if you'd like to know more about Awi's work uh, in Octopus, check out the links below in, this, in the description box below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with other people. Um, and don't forget to subscribe uh, to the channel for more great content. So from, I think for me, Sophia Jamil uh, in Malaysia slash Singapore and Awi in Indonesia. Yeah. So,
Makassar. <laughs> from Makassar, yes, exactly. From Makassar in, uh, in Indonesia. Um, thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. See you next time. Thank you, Tabaya. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Bye.